The world is going absolutely crazy right now with riots, rebellions, and revolutions happening all around the world right now as people can't afford basic necessities because the central banks around the world have abused their power and their privilege of controlling the currency and the chickens are finally coming home to roost. The consequences are finally getting laid bare out for all to see and people are not happy about it. People are not happy about not being able to afford things, about their governments abusing their power and they're taking to the streets, they are taking to protests and we are seeing revolutions, riots, and rebellions happen all around the world right now. And the question is, is it possible this comes home to the United States? Ready? Let's dive in. Take a look with me at this article from Forbes.com, and we're going to look at a number of things that are happening right now. Number one, we have in Sri Lanka, inflation reached 54% in June. Just take a pause here, and I know there's bigger inflation around the world right now, but take a look at the official numbers there, 54% in one month. Yes, inflation is bad here. Yes, things can get worse, but there is a little bit to be thankful for. Right. If you're looking at your prices went up 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, even if they went up 50 percent in a year, I mean, things can get much worse. And so that's one one thing to take away from this video, if nothing else, is that man, very thankful for the way things are, because I know things can be a lot worse. I know they can be better. That's what this whole video is about. But I'm still thankful for the country that we live in right now. All right, Sri Lanka, 54% in June. So the central bank raised interest rates to 15%. The problem with this is you're trying to fight inflation, but at the same time, you're causing a ton of pain, ton of collapse, and so you're trying not to utterly collapse your economy. Same thing that the Federal Reserve is doing, right? Inflation at 8%, they moved interest rates up to 1.5%, like, right? Everybody's wondering how that's gonna get a handle on inflation, but if they go too much harder, too much faster, they're scared they're gonna tip everything over into a deflationary death spiral with debt defaults and everything like that, which they're trying to avoid. So Sri Lanka, inflation reached 54%. And this is one of the bad places right now. They're one of the revolutions going on right now. Their government is basically just being knocked over right now. The central bank governor indicated that he was gonna stay in his job, but he warned that the political instability in the country may delay progress on the negotiations with the IMF for a bailout package. So they're trying to get a bailout package right now. And if you look at what they're saying, this Reuters article right now is saying about the IMF package. They have almost agreed with the IMF. At the policy level, they need a higher level commitment from a stable administration. So that's one of the things the IMF looks for. They don't like to hand out bailout money if there's instability in the government. Same thing Lebanon was going through recently, highest inflation in the world, and they were trying to get a bailout package, but the government is so unstable, which typically tends to happen during times like this. So Sri Lanka is a bad one. They were storming the presidential palace, storming the central bank, crazy stuff happening right now. But it's not just there. If we look at Albania, thousands of Albanians marched last week demanding the government resign. Again, another sign of revolution here. This is, as a side note, one of the reasons I don't like the name American Revolution. This isn't my idea. Many Austrian economists and libertarians have pointed this out, but it wasn't a revolutionary war. It was a secessionary war. It was not saying, hey, we're going to overthrow the government and set up our own government in its place. It wasn't about that. It was, hey, we just want to be by ourselves. That's secession, not revolution. But in Albania, they are demanding the government resign from corruption, inflation. The central bank has 1.25% interest rates, but inflation was 6.7%. Look, 6.7% official Albanian inflation numbers, that's lower than the United States. And they're basically calling for a new government. Argentina, very similar story. Inflation, at 60%, interest rates at 52%. They're urging the government to resign. They're rejecting IMF loans that come with tougher conditions for citizens. This is one of those things that you don't want to get yourself into one of those doom loops because if you get yourself into one of those, then it's very hard to get out. So you don't want to become reliant. And the citizens in Argentina apparently recognize this and they don't want that bailout from the IMF here. It's still going on. We move over to Panama. In Panama, there are protests against the government because of, again, 
again, high cost of living, people demanding higher wages, lower prices, removal of supply chain bottlenecks. Let's move on to Kenya. Hundreds of protesters urging the government to lower food prices. Move on to Ghana. Ghana protesters took to the street. We are seeing this absolutely everywhere around the world right now. So number one, what's causing this? Well, central banks around the world for decades have abused their power, printed too much money, and the chickens are finally coming home to roost. That's number one. Number two, the entire world gave the United States an extraordinary ability to take advantage of the rest of the world by signing up to use the dollar and never weaning themselves off the dollar. So the very fact that the United States gets to control the currency that the rest of the world uses means that in a time like now, when the dollar is doing that and looking like a penny stock and it's at 108, higher than it's been in years, and by all accounts looking like it's heading only higher, that means for all of these countries that we just looked at who need to trade their currency to get dollars to buy the stuff that they import, they're getting poorer and poorer and poorer and poorer. Meanwhile, we're taking advantage of some cheaper stuff from overseas, but not enough to offset our own inflation and the, our own problems that we've encountered with our own central bank. So all these countries have become dependent on the dollar. And as they try and exchange their currency for dollars to get the stuff they need, they're devaluing their own money because they have to print more of their own money to get some of those dollars. So they're in this downward spiral and it is not looking good for any Anybody who's in power during the time, a time like right now, even though it's probably not all their fault, it's the fault of every single administration that's come before and never done anything about it because they just said, we'll let the next generation handle it. We'll let the next administration take care of it. We'll push that problem off to later. Well, guess what? You can't do that forever. The consequences are finally starting to rise to the top all around the world. So what's the end game? And could this come to the United States of America? Well, the end game is at some point, countries stop using the dollar, right? That's the end game because at some point, somebody will realize, somebody that controls a lot of energy, controls a lot of exports, controls a lot of oil, controls a lot of commodities, will realize, we don't need that dollar. And if you know who I'm talking about, if you know, you know, I'm referring to some specific countries here that are saying, hey, we don't need the dollar. We can slowly start to get rid of dollars and set up new harder currencies in their place. And slowly other countries will join our team and adopt our other currencies. So at some point, the rest of the world will realize we don't want to use the currency of the country that's been abusing it and abusing that power for decades. So we're gonna get rid of those, use a different money instead. Well, what happens when the rest of the world starts dumping dollars? There's only one place on earth that will still take those dollars. That's the United States. How will we take them? In terms of purchasing our stuff. So all those dollars will flood back to America to purchase our stocks, to purchase our land, to purchase our real estate, to purchase our inventory. And we will finally get all those dollars back that we've been exporting overseas for decades and all of the stuff we've been importing for decades will go back to where it came from. And so unfortunately, given the amount of irresponsibility and kicking the can down the road, it looks like we have a lot more economic pain ahead. And whether that comes in the form of a deflationary death spiral from central banks over tightening and allowing things to default on that side, or it comes in the form of inflation where they print to cover up the mistakes, we're still in for a heavy deleveraging where all that purchasing power from in the future has already been spent. We've been living in the most over leveraged economy in history. When you look at household debt, corporate debt, government debt, when you consider derivatives, we are the most over leveraged economy in history and all leverage must be deleveraged. There's no way around it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.